you've ever been on a field trip and some little child comes up to you and they say, what is this? And it's like a little caterpillar and they hold it in their hands and you have no idea and it's probably poisonous and you tell them to drop it and you really have no clue what kind of creature that is. Well, I have the app for you. It's called iNaturalist. I'm going to talk you through it, how to go on the website and I'm going to show you how to download it onto your phone. So the first thing to do is to find iNaturalist. You can find it on Google, you can find it on the App Store and just give it a click and check out the website. So you can use naturalists, botanists, ecologists, anyone who's got this kind of knowledge about the environment, they can log on to the app, they can look at your findings and they, they can comment, they can tag your insect or your plant and they can tell you the species and they can really help you out. And it's really fun for kids to do because they can take lots of snaps on their field trip and then they can have a look and see what creatures they found after they find. Okay, so I'm gonna talk you through it today. Okay, once you're exploring the website, you can have a look if you go to observations, you can have a quick look around the world. You can see all of these little gray dots. They represent an observation of a finding of a plant, an animal or an insect. And I'm just gonna click on Hong Kong here. And if you keep clicking, you can start to drag a little bit closer the map forward and zoom right in onto your chosen destination. Now I've chosen Hong Kong because that's where four teachers are based. That's where me and Katie are both living. And I'm gonna go right to Hong Kong Island and have a quick look at some of the observations that have already been updated onto this brilliant app. Now, it takes a little while just to zoom in and you'll start to see that those gray dots of clouds where animals and species have been observed have now changed into red, blue, or green dots to represent animals, insects, and plant life. And I'm gonna click on this little green dot here to represent something that has been found right in the center. It's the Japanese cherry. So the Japanese cherry tree, I'm gonna click that now. And it takes me to the observation that has been made by a budding naturalist or a botanist, someone, a high school student or a primary school student. They've taken a picture of this Japanese cherry and then the community have identified it. And you can see here on the right, all the people who've identified that this is in fact a Japanese cherry blossom tree. Now, that really just sparked my interest. I was wondering, is this native to Hong Kong? And if you scroll down, you can start to see which animals are native and which animals have been found around here. So it might be an environmental or an eco part of an ecosystem. You've got birds and insects that live around the tree. Now, I'm just gonna click Japanese cherry right at the top and it's gonna take me to the page where it will show me all the different observations that have been made for this species. So it's just loading at the moment and you'll see that a new map is gonna pop up. And this one is all about Japanese cherry. It's got some beautiful images that people have taken. And if I scroll down to the map, you can see the instances where this species is native. You can see where it's spread to. Most popular, of course, in Japan. It's spread to South Korea, Taiwan, and in Hong Kong, there are evidence of this species too. So as you can see, this would be a great to track a species Around the world, you can start to see which environments are more uh, common for this species. The day after I tried this with my class on our recent field trip, we went on a nature hike and it was really great. We went through the mangroves in Saipur. It looks absolutely fantastic, there's stunning views. And we really made some great observations. So I'm gonna show you very briefly how you can access your own observations and start engaging with the community that are on there. So whether you're using the website or the app version on your tablet or mobile, you can log in really simply, just needs a login and a password, and instantly you are part of that community. So I'm just gonna go through a few of my snaps here. I've taken a few pictures here along our mangrove hike. So this is a picture of a mock pineapple tree. and uh, That's a common name that we use around in Hong Kong to describe it, but I really wanted to know the scientific name and see, is it closely related to the pineapple? So, as I said, how quickly people respond will reflect on how popular this app is in your local environment. Those people living next to a nature park or a university are probably more likely to have a lot of budding botanists, environmentalists that are going to quickly find out what you've posted and get back to you. So, at the moment, we're just sitting and waiting, but hopefully we'll get some feedback for you soon. If you want to take part, then do download the app. Leave us some comments below. We are for teachers. Let us know how you're getting on with this. I think it could be a great benefit for any environmental lessons, for any STEM projects. Let us know how you're going to use it in your own classrooms. Thank you. We are for teachers. Goodbye.